Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, we're going to see an amazing puzzle composed by Christopher Yu in 2019. So take a look at this position here. It's white to move. The white pawns are going up the board, both of which are threatening to promote. And black has a rook, a knight, and a couple of pawns. See if you can find the winning idea and just see how deeply you can calculate this whole thing out. I'll give you a moment to figure that out. While you pause the video and think about it, I would quickly like to encourage you to subscribe if you have not yet already. Half of the income that I earn in this channel goes directly to charity, so it helps out a lot if you do. So let's get to the study. So you might be tempted to just go, you know, go here, push a pawn, push a pawn. Those are good initial thoughts, but the idea behind these is to calculate as deeply as possible. So your temptation of king g7 is correct, if you had that thought. The idea being you want to push these pawns, right? Okay, great. So black, of course, knows that you want to push these pawns, and they can play a very tricky move. And hopefully you consider this in your defense. So black can play knight f4 here. Okay, what is this move doing? So what's the trick here? You have two pawns that can promote. What do you do? Well, let's talk about the H-pawn. If you promote the H-pawn, you are actually losing this game as the white pieces. Why is that? Well, not just because I can take here, although that would still work. You have a nice move, knight e6 check. And if the king runs to any of these squares, you just take the queen straight away for free. So they have to go here and then you're buying yourself some time, knight g5 check, king comes back, and now you get the queen. More importantly, maybe not more importantly, a key detail is you take f7 with check, the king moves, and then you get to d8, hitting the c6 pawn. Your king is going to come in, and from c6, your e5 pawn is defended by the knight. So you can't promote your h pawn in that line. That's the point. Okay, what about the f pawn? So after king g7, I play knight f4, you promote to a knight. But let's quickly consider what happens if you promote, if you promote to a queen. Well, you probably saw it. Knight, not there. Knight to e6 is a fork. Ouch. So you can't do that. So the only way to prevent it, I've already shown it, is promote to a knight. Okay, great. So now what's the threat? If you're playing on the black side of this, what do you think white's going to do next? Are they threatening to promote? Are they going to move their king? What do you have to prevent? So right now you really can't do anything as black because you have a couple of pawns here to worry about. You have this pawn that's going to promote. The best move in this position for black is to just try to win this c6 pawn consolidate these pawns and see if they can hold the draw. So, king b6. And you might say to me, but wait a second, can I just promote this pawn? That's a great thought if you, if you did think that. So take a second and calculate out after this move, do you see the winning idea, or sorry, the drawing idea for black that can save this loss? So in this position, Rook takes f8, bang. And what happens here? You take with the queen or you take with the king? Let's say you take with the queen. You get hit with a fork. Ouch. Let's say you take with the king. You get hit with a fork. Ouch. Right? You really don't want to do anything else because, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So, in case you, in case you do, let me just make sure I say that. If you want to move the, the queen somewhere else, I don't know, anywhere. The computer is saying queen h6. We'll just use that as an example. Rook d8. And this is going to apparently be a draw. Because remember, these pawns are going down the board. Like, oops, look at these arrows. Down the board. So I'm attacking here. Everything's held together. There's no issue here for black to hold. Of course, easy for the engine to say, right? Okay, so what's the point here? The point is that they play after king b6. They can't promote this pawn. They play king to f7. Okay, 
So now, let's just make sure the point is clear. You have a couple of options here. Maybe you're thinking throw in this check so if they take, you do this. No, remember the pawns are going down the board, this way. So just make sure they keep saying that. So a cool move here, and the best move, is knight to e6. So what's the idea here? You're leaving this knight hanging in two different directions. Well, if the king takes, what's going to happen? Well, this now leaves the knight completely unprotected, and this will be a win for black. So it's a tricky move if the person's not paying attention. But of course, they would know not to take with the king. They instead take with the knight. What does that free up? Well, you just gave up a knight for free. Rook h8. That's the idea. I want to get at this pawn. I got to stop this pawn. Maybe I can try to take these pawns with my king and hold a draw. Just maybe. Okay, let's see. King g7. What do you do? As black. So, as black, the best thing you can do is just give up your rook. And now, the puzzle really begins here. And another puzzle. There are so many puzzles in this puzzle. How does white win this? You have very limited material. You have to be careful not to trade off two pawns because a knight and a king cannot mate against a lone king. So, if you're white here, they take, what do you do? It's only one move that wins. Only one. You can move the knight, you can move the king. Right? You, one, two, three, four, five, and you can have a bunch of knight moves. Right? Any of these sensible? The only move that wins here. Only move. King g6. Why? Well, I think it'll help if you see the basic idea in a moment. So, black trying to put up good defense. They play king d6, right? They want to try to grab as much space, attack the knight, make room for the pawn, all that good stuff. And just as a quick side note, it may seem like there's no difference here, but there is a difference. If they go king d5, you can play king f5 and look at this barrier that you're beginning to form. So you're attacking this, by the way. So maybe maybe you take this right away. No, you don't. The best move here is king f5. The idea is that you don't want them to get to this pawn. So they play something like c6. You play this really nice, calm move, d3. And you are blocking all of these squares off, forcing them back. And this is going to be a very nice win. So knight d8 is the best move in this position. Whoa. King f6. The, the beautiful computer moves are just amazing to me. Anyway, I can go down computer lines all day. So pretty much the idea is that after king d6, you can counter their king d6 with king f6. And you have to win this game now. You have to be really careful you don't lose this pawn. How do you do that as white? So this is an amazing study. That's why it's hard to find out and figure this out. Okay, king d5. Okay, you just counter that with king f5. No problem. I'm trying to create a little bit of a barrier here. So maybe you think they run and sneak around this way. Does that work? Let's think about it. They have two basic ideas. They can move a pawn or move the king in. If they move the king in, what do you do? Well, you don't want to take this pawn. Because if you do, what happens? Well, they're here, and you can't stop this now. Instead, you don't go for the material. This is an instructive moment. Instead, you go for this move, king e4. And look at what you're doing, creating a little barrier here. Nice, including this, this square. So you're pushing them back. And then you can worry about the pawn. You can worry about all those other things. Because let's say they go here. Now you probably can get away with taking here and then pushing this pawn forward because your knight is covering all of those things. And this is this is correct, yeah. See, like this. And this would not be resulting in anything. You could just take that. That's going to be a win. Very fancy. Okay, so after king e4, what do you play as black? Sorry. After this move king f5 and then black plays c6 because i was just showing this king move did not work what do you play very similar idea if you're sticking with me the very similar idea is d3 and you're making this little barrier here which means the king is forced back and now it just gets even cooler you have so many great moves in this position and it's just 
the, the studies are just crazy. So in this position, knight d8, I'm threatening to take this, right? So if you make a move like this, I take this and I win. This is going to be a winning king and pawn ending. Guess who has the opposition? Bang, I do. So let's go back. Okay. So I play this move. They play pawn to c6. I play d3. Now, like I said, they have a couple of ideas here. In the study itself, I believe the next move was c5. So let's play the move that Christopher intended to keep in the study. c5, and kind of the same idea I was describing a moment ago. You take this with the knight, king takes, king takes, and now this is a winning king upon ending. And the study concludes right here. That is a winning king upon ending because you have the opposition. They go somewhere, you just compliment them, and then something like this will do. They move here, you move here. This is more than enough. Look at that power. So they have to back up, no stalemates, and you win. That pawn is going to become a queen. But that's it. That's the amazing study from Christopher Yu. I think it's a fantastic study. Just looking at the whole thing in a faster term, promote to a knight, threaten this promotion, first you move the king. All of this stuff is just brilliantly composed just to have that extra tempo required to win the king and pawn ending. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like the video, consider subscribing. All that stuff is incredibly helpful. But that is it for now. Thank you so much. Bye.